All right, we are live to Facebook for another Thursday's Top Tips in Real Estate. My name is Lucy McGuire with Aero Title Services, and we host this amazing segment every Thursday with a new topic on the real estate industry to just engage you guys, get you guys educated on what's out there. The not, there's so much information out there in the real estate industry, and we go through so many different um, topics and just educational pieces for you guys. So if you guys haven't tuned in before, welcome. And we're really excited. We always have local lenders and realtors come on and educate you guys. They are local experts in this field. And truly, I am very thankful for them. And I know that they love sharing their brain with us. So today, our topic is actually hurricane preparation, which here in Florida is a big topic. Uh, we have a lot of people who move here and they really don't know what to do when it, when a hurricane is on the way. But we're here to, you know, just help you and give you those tips in the home buying process. If you're a first time home buyer that hasn't owned a home before, or just a first time home owner that hasn't owned a home before and didn't know what to do to prepare your house for that. So we actually have two very special guests with us on here today that aren't realtors or lenders. And the first one we have is Bob Thornton with O'Donnell Impact Windows and Storm Protection, a very good friend of mine, very educated on the, very, on the topic, and I'm super excited to have him talk. And then we're going to go into our normal section where each of um, the realtors and the lenders on this call are going to give their feedback on their top tips and etc. just their viewpoint about what to be, do to be prepared. And then we're going to have our second guest speak, Peter Sacoli with Sailfish Insurance, and he's going to give us some tips on insurance in the case of hurricanes. So there's a lot of information today to soak up, so make sure you guys stay tuned. And without further ado, we're going to start off with Bob. Thank you so much, Bob, for coming on. I'm going to highlight your screen and please give us all of the Low down on your your take on hurricanes and what people should do to be prepared. All right, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Appreciate you guys. Uh, first of all, you're in real estate when you're trying to sell a property. If it doesn't have hurricane protection, I know it's a deterrent. People coming down here are now so aware because of the media about hurricanes and the threat. Uh, so if you have a house and it doesn't have protection, you you could suggest to the homeowner we'll give them a free estimate. That way you guys have it in your clutches so that when somebody comes in and wants to do something, they say, well, how much does it cost? You can say, well, you can do accordion shutters for X, you can do impact windows for Y. The, the options out there, the least expensive option is plywood, which really isn't Miami-Dade rated, but in a pinch, a storm's coming in, put up 5 eighths plywood, it'll save your house, save your roof, that's, that's a biggie. The next step is, is panels. I don't recommend panels. We stop selling panels after about four years because people will steal them for the aluminum and recycle them. You have your garage open. They're typically stored there. The first hurricane we went into after years of, of putting them up, people were calling saying, we're going to sue you. We don't have enough panels. And I said, look, to close out your, your uh, permit, we had to have every panel in place. So there, what happened? I said, you leave your garage open. They were getting 77 cents a pound for scrap. They run in and grab them, throw them on their truck, and, and they're gone. So we don't really recommend panels. Plus, they're awkward, painful, slow process to put them up and take them down. Accordion shutters are the next step. But there's also screen. There's hurricane-proof screen, which I looked into years ago. The cost of it is more expensive than accordions, almost the same as doing impact windows. So I really don't look at it as a viable alternative. And the screen, when a board hits it, it bends way in. So they have to do build outs to keep it away from the glass. It just, in my experience, it's not worth it. Accordion shutters are the affordable alternative. You can close up your whole house in a matter of minutes. You're safe from a storm, 175 mile an hour direct hit, they'll hold up. We use a five point locking system. You've got four big aluminum rods that lock into the frame and then a center a center screw. So you've got five points to keep the storm out. Next, and really the best alternative, if you can afford it, is the impact windows. We don't carry aluminum framed windows. You already have aluminum frames in your house. It's a failed experiment. They only have a two-year warranty. They're not energy efficient. 
if, if you put the proper window in, it's got three pieces of glass, two pieces of impact glass with polyvinyl butyrol in between. And then an exterior piece, like we had storm windows in Connecticut where I grew up. That, that's like a storm window. You've got argon gas in between the, the impact glass and the breakable glass. What you end up with is a very energy efficient, and, and I, can, I can tell you finally, I bought my house at absolute auction right before the crash. My timing's always been perfect. And I was gonna fix it up and flip it. And uh, I stayed here for 12 years. I finally, this year, was able to recover enough that I got my windows in. My bill in the summer was typically over $200. I got my bill two days ago from FPL, it was 128. So it makes a significant difference. I have a train, the train tracks, I live in the soundings in Hope Sound, five houses from the train tracks. I don't hear the train whistle at night anymore. So they're extremely quiet. They will keep a storm out. They'll also keep an intruder out. We did Sheriff Snyder's house for that very reason. He has a lot of credible death threats against him and he's never home. And when I went through the process with them and I, we, we don't really sell, we educate. I don't, I, I don't have salesmen, I have consultants and probably the same thing that all of you do. That's why you're successful. You know, you listen to your customer. They may think they want this. You know that maybe this is better for them. Educate them properly and they'll do business with you. And I've got 10 full-time kids that, they're not all kids and they're not, none of them are my kids, but they're all my kids. But uh, they're out there doing it every day. But Sheriff Snyder, when I went through the process and I said, oh, and safety. And he said, Bob, you can stop right there. When we have to serve a warrant through your windows, we hate you. So, so they will keep an intruder out. You can break them. You can take a, a, a hammer and beat on it and, and get it to break, but you're not going get, to get through it. it the, the polyvinyl butyrol will keep you out. Even if your window smashes in a hurricane, it's not coming out. If it does come out, we're going to have a lot bigger worries. It's going to look like the island did, unfortunately, last year. So those are, those are the real options for hurricane protection. Remember the plywood in a panic. Get your supplies ahead of time. You're dealing with people that are coming to Florida who've never lived through and seen the nonsense that goes on, the media nonsense. I hate, I won't advertise during a hurricane because once you see that, that swirl, it's too late. You can't do anything. And the spaghetti models, we actually worked for the guy in Martin County that does the spaghetti models. And he said, Oh yeah, I look for the worst scenario and that's what I post over and over again. I said, I really don't like you. It's just not, panic is a horrible thing. It's a hurricane is a storm. A nor'easter is a storm. Just keep it in perspective. There have been hurricanes on earth forever and we've lived through them. So I go out there to keep everyone calm. It's kind of like going through this pandemic. Keep everyone calm. Look at reality. You're out there in the world. What's really going on? Not turn off the TV. During the storm, turn off the TV. Yeah, you want to be prepared, but you don't need to look at Jim Cantore coming to Stewart. I was drinking a cup of coffee last year with my sunglasses on, and he found a little rough patch on the river, and he's there leaning and talking. It's embarrassing. You know, it, it really, it's like, it's embarrassing. So get your stuff ahead of time. Make sure you have th at least three days non-perishable food and water. You want to have plenty of water. I think it's really important you have a, gas, uh, <laughs> two gas tanks, it's propane, so that you can go heat water and at least pour and have coffee. You can do some cooking on it. Um, if you don't have a swimming pool, you do have a bathtub. If you take plastic, it, tape it over the drain with duct tape, fill your bathtub with water. Now you have water that you can flush your toilet with. You take a pan, pour it in the back of your toilet, you can flush your toilet. I know they're simple little things, but people don't think it through and they do panic. Make sure your cell phone's fully charged. See, have a boost with it so that you can use it. Don't keep opening your refrigerator and your freezer. The less you open it, the longer it'll last if you don't have a generator. If you don't have a whole house generator, you have a little generator, you can run and charge it a couple times a day. You're going to be fine. Um, sunscreen and bug spray. It gets really hot in the house if you don't have a generator. And I know because I've lived through a few of them. You're going to open your windows. Bugs are going to get in. You're going to be outside in the daytime because it's probably going to be cooler outside than in your house. I know it sounds silly, but it's worth cash. Have cash on hand. If the power goes down, all our magic cards stop working. So you want to have cash so you can get things. I probably said first aid kit. If you have medication, make sure you at least have seven days because Everything does shut down and you don't want to be in that place. 
flashlight, batteries, extra batteries. That's, that's pretty much it. And then I like to stock up during the year. I go to BJ's and get a case of this or a case of that. Hold on to it through the season and then put it into my pantry so it doesn't go bad so I can do it again next year. Make sure you have extra cans of gas if you're using a gas generator. Make sure your gas generator is outside, not inside, not in the garage where carbon dioxide builds up. This is all stuff I've seen with people. That's not good. If you have accordion shutters or panels, don't wait to the last minute. Make sure you check everything because if, if we've done it, I answered last year for that storm, I answered personally 134 service calls. I, I put my work clothes on, I put my tool bag in the back of my truck, and I go, I love it. You know, you go out and you're Johnny on the spot. We're, we, we did a video right before this last threat about how to close your shutters. We're redoing them tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. We're redoing them tomorrow so that I'll have all online. We have a uh, hurricane preparedness guide. And if you want one, you can steal. We've boiled it down over the years. You can steal it. You can put your logo on it, give it to your new potential customers and say, here's, it's, it's got pretty much all common sense, but common sense seems to have gone out the window. It should be, it is now called uncommon sense. Uh, and that's, I mean, that's really, I don't want to bore you. I know you've all lived through it, but if we can be of service to help you sell more, that's what we want to do. And, and we don't mind getting in front of the customer. I cannot tell you how many estimates I've done that either we weren't the right people for them and I told them that, we didn't have the right product for them and I told them that, or they just never went with us, they went with someone else. So we're here to serve, we're, my guys work, they're, they're awesome. We did, right after the storm, the week after the storm, we did in five days over 200 estimates. So they're, they're out there making it happen. Alex, for example, the kid's working seven days a week. You know, it, you, you can have whatever you want as long as you're willing to work for it and these kids are all working. So, anybody have any questions? Absolutely, Bob. Thank you so much. Does Does anybody have any questions for Bob? No. Um, I do just want to say that they are local, locally owned and operated. Bob, you are incredible. Just the work ethic that you guys put in and the honesty. Um, there's a lot of places down south. A lot of those. Um, her impact window places, and they'll really try to pr price gouge you guys. And the Ethic, the, 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 I can't speak today. My brain is mush. Um, Bob with O'Donnell Impact Windows, they are super ethical and they, like he just said, you know, they're not going to, you know, mess around. They're going to let you know exactly what is best for your home. So I know that I highly recommend them and just thank you, Bob, for coming on and giving us all of those tips for the people that are watching live on Facebook and the people that are on this call. Um, it's a big part of our society here in Florida, but a lot of times it's like empty threats and you'd made a very, very, very good point about not watching the news or the weather channel during a hurricane. Like just be prepared by yourself. Don't listen to the hoopla because it's, that's what it is. It's hoopla. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks, Bob. Not sure All right, get guys. Out of here. <laughs> So we are gonna go into our normal discussion now where we um, have the local realtors and lenders talk about from their perspectives, you know, the realtor perspective or the lending perspective, what you guys wanna keep an eye out for in regards to if a hurricane is coming, if, the process, if you're in the middle of the process already um, and et cetera. So then just, if you guys are just tuning in now, make sure to stay tuned because we do have another amazing special guest and that's Peter Sicoli with Sailfish Insurance. And he is going to give us some tips for insurance, which is another very big piece of the puzzle of real estate. So stay tuned. Um, Cody, we have you up first. I'll go ahead and spotlight your screen. Hello, hello, hello. Cody here with Bourgeois Real Estate Group. I hope everybody is having the greatest day. I first want to say um, I'm going to be speaking from experience. I've been through probably five or six of them, however many there were since 89. Um, and, you know, when you've been through a few of them, you kind of tend to uh, take a few chances. So I don't recommend that. <laughs> uh, but you should always be prepared. Um, 
we also, uh, like Bob, have a flyer that we kind of hand out for hurricane preparedness also. Um, basically, there's, there's just, you know, some simple things that you need to do. Um, the most important thing that I would say is, is for you to, if you can afford it, buy a generator. And if you can have the <clears throat> extra box added to your um, breaker panel so that you can easily plug it in, you, believe me, you're gonna want a generator to run something. Because like Bob said, it gets hot outside, it gets hotter in your house and it's uncomfortable. And if you don't have a fan or something, uh, you're gonna be miserable. So you definitely wanna have a generator. Um, you wanna have cash on hand. You wanna make sure that one of, at least one of your vehicles is running properly and filled with gas. And you probably wanna have some extra gas cans for that generator. Um, <clears throat> You want to also take a look at your insurance policies, and I'm pretty sure Peter will explain to you why. Um, and by the way, if you guys need insurance, Peter's the guy to see. <laughs> um, but yeah, you want to take a look at your policy to make sure you know what's what's covered, what your responsibility is going to be. Um, you want to take an inventory of what you have in your home, what would need to be replaced if anything were to happen. Um, and you also want to, you know, kind of take the necessary steps to secure your home, like anything that you have in your yard that can be blown away with the wind, you want to make sure you secure that, uh, you know, put your shutters up. Um, I am not a fan of those panel shutters. I, I hate it, but, you know, that's what my house came with, so that's what I got to do, but um, you want to make sure you don't wait until the last minute either, because when these things come, they can come quickly um, and catch you off guard. Um, anything that, that uh, needs to come in from outside, you want to make sure you secure that. Um, and what else we got here? Make sure you have, uh, you know, water on hand. Um, they say you should have, you know, at least like, you know, one gallon per person per day for at least three days. Um, you know, for drinking and sanitation. Um, you want to make sure you have a bunch of non-perishable food for at least three days. Um, battery powered radio, maybe, um, you know, flashlights, lanterns, extra batteries. You want to have a first aid kit. Um, just make sure that you're prepared. I would say, if they're saying three days, I would say for a week because more than likely you're going to lose power and who knows how long it's gonna take for it to come back on. You know, with FPNL, some places take priority and it's it's not always you. Um, so you wanna make sure that, the, the biggest thing is just to be prepared. Make sure that you map out everything that you're gonna to need to do. Be prepared for it all so that when it comes, you can just sail right through it. So that is my spiel. And uh, whoever's next. <laughs> Thanks, Cody. Next up is Katie Bourgeois. <laughs> hey, Katie Bourgeois with the Bourgeois Real Estate Group. This is such a great conversation. Um, and I, I made a long list of things that I want to share. And Bob hit a bunch. Cody hit a bunch. Um, going back to what Bob was talking about, about common sense. I heard a quote of a long time ago, and I say it frequently that common sense is so uncommon, it's now a superpower. So keep your head cool and um, you know, do that prepping well in advance of the storm. Um, not only for you know, the, the availability of supplies and making sure you have what you need for yourself and your family, but also so you're prepared, you know you're good to go and you can maybe help a neighbor. We have a lot of older, um, uh, seasonal residents here and sometimes you know you may need to make a phone call help out a neighbor who's not home and shut her up for them um, pull their uh, items in from their patio or their front yard stuff like that uh, that's kind of you know my my little tip um, so you know Bob with O'Donnell man I see his trucks everywhere I told like I was I'm driving in Palm City today and I'm like oh there goes Bob's O'Donnell trucks 
Um, so I wanted to make a couple of points. I made some some notes um, while Bob was talking and knowing that Peter's on the call, I wanted to bring something up so that he can touch on it. Um, so when we're talking about the improvements, right? You're gonna call Bob, you're gonna call O'Donnell, uh, Windows and, and Storm, and they're gonna, they're gonna do the improvements to your property. Mm -hmm. So now you need to call someone, you need to call a home inspector that does a wind mitigation report. So you have an updated report of the improvements that you've made to the properties, uh, to the property. So that could include a new door. It can include um, just putting on a um, accordion shutter on a, a, a window that wasn't protected prior. So you want to make sure that you're getting an updated report and then giving it to your insurance guy like Peter Sicoli at Selfish Insurance so that you can capture the credits that you get on your homeowner's insurance. Um, another point about that is we saw it this past time. Hey, we were very, very lucky. Our neighbors to the Northeast were not. Unfortunately, in the Northeast, they've got a tremendous amount of flooding. I have family members that are, they, their home is devastated. It's really bad. There's nothing you can do necessarily about flood, right? So another topic for Peter, um, even though a storm may not have high winds, high winds may not be the threat, but if we have three days of torrential rain, that with a little bit of wind, either prior or during, you could maybe see some accumulation of debris that could then uh, inhibit the flow of water which then that water starts backing up on your street, it backs up into your yard, it might start backing up through your front door, your garage or your back porch. Um, so you need to, I think we all need it in Florida. I'm not trying to sell flood insurance. Peter is the one to talk to about that, but I have flood insurance on my property. We are high and dry, but that does not, uh, you know, it doesn't mean that it can't ever happen because I have a creek just behind my home. If something happens and that water comes up, and destroys all my flooring and drywall, I'm protected because I have a, a flood insurance policy in place. Um, the uh, couple, those couple things for uh, Peter, hopefully he can uh, touch on those. You know, it's about saving money, it's about being protected, being prepared. Um, so I had a couple fun tips about hurricane prep and I, it, about the common sense is so uncommon, it's a superpower. So. I took some tips from my mom seeing hurricanes through my entire life here, um, living on the Treasure Coast. So the water that you need, Cody said we need you know, several gallons uh, for family members for several days. Well, guess what? Leading up to the storm, the water comes out of the tap. You don't have to go to Publix and spend $50 on water. You can spend a little money on some uh, glass or plastic containers that you can fill with water, hopefully, preferably some that you can freeze. So you have two functions. You have ice for your perishable uh, food. And when that ice melts, you now have drinking water. So it doesn't make up for, you know, the commode flushing. But again, if you have a pool or a bathtub or a way to secure some of that water, or even if you have um, water, uh, what are those things called that drains into a, a rain barrel, a rain barrel. If you had a rain barrel, that's not only great for, you know, your property, but in, in watering on a regular, but it's also good to capture water in case you need some water to do some flushing of commodes in the house. So another fun tip um, that I wanted to share real quick is um, what I do customarily in our family. We don't eat a whole lot of pasta, but let me tell you, when that storm's coming, we're not watching the news, we're making big um, portions of pasta dishes, things that will can you can cook and then freeze in individual individual portions, and you can reach into that freezer, grab a portion real quick, and you've got a quick meal or a snack um, while you're you know cleaning up debris in your yard for the next couple of days. Um, so definitely, in addition to you know what's in your 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 top list there, someone like me, I like gloves. I need gloves in my hurricane preparedness kit because those branches are, are not soft and cute. They are broken and sharp um, and uh, prep early so that you can help your neighbors. And you know, one other fun thing, once you get your hurricane snacks, don't eat them while we're during the storm. Wait until you're going to need that food. Eat your fresh food, order pizza, order from a local restaurant that's still open up until, you know, up until it's no longer safe to be on the roads. And um, you know, I, I wish you I wish you well through the remainder of our hurricane season. We do have flyers. We have hurricane 
um, tracking maps if you're interested in those. Um, and with that, I'll toss it on over. Sorry to take up so much time. I just have so much to share and so many fun things about, you know, the, the fun side of the hurricane um, and the things you can do to prepare and, and, and get yourself positioned appropriately for your family. Are you attacking me with the snacks, Katie? I mean, I'm a, no, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> I, I definitely felt personally attacked because I'm the free attack. I, I mean, you don't have to call me out so hard like that, all right? <laughs> I am guilty myself. <laughs> yes, but I, I did really like your tip about the the water. You know, you you don't have to drink it while like up until up until you gotta keep it comes your out food. Of the tap. exactly the water comes out of the tap and it's probably you're already drinking it anyway it's in your ice cubes already so mm -hmm. you know make be making ice do your dishes do your laundry ahead of the storm keep yourself busy stay away from the tv yes stay away from the tv <laughs> as you need them, wrap up your tv just wrap it up <laughs> play some board games whip out the uh, deck of cards and you know play some fun stuff absolutely all right antonella you're up next yeah, so the TV is part of one of those um, non necessary uh, <laughs> electronics that we can uh, unplug right before a uh, hurricane so that we can uh, save some energy there and uh, prepare the house in case of, of, you know, electrical surge or something happens. So just unplug all of your uh, non necessary electrical appliances so that it can help later on. Um, the other things that I'm telling to my buyer, especially now during uh, the hurricane season, which we are from June until November here in Florida, is um, as soon as you buy the house, go and check on the hurricane um, stuff, the hurricane, um, oh, sorry, when the word don't come to your <laughs> to, to mind. Um, so as an example, if you have uh, hurricane panels, and you need, you know, the, um, the bolt wings and all of that stuff, make sure that you get them in advance. You have to be ready from June until November. Don't get ready the day before. Home Depot, Lowe's, and all of those stores are going to be swamped. You don't want to be part of that rush. So if you have time during the day, you have nothing to do, a Sunday that, you know, you want to go out and shopping, stop by Home Depot, get all of your essentials, get uh, batteries, get flashlight, you know, get your house ready. Uh, also, make sure that the roof is uh, free of debris. And like everybody else is saying, make sure that your patio and your garden and all that stuff is, you know, well cared for so that you don't have to do anything, you know, last minute. Because if something happens and all of a sudden we, ha we go from a hurricane one to, you know, category three or category four or five and we have to evacuate, you do not have that time. You have a lot of time now to get ready for it. Um, so um, another thing that, you know, it's good to know and make sure that you're... Katie, you're if you're on the island, you know, people that are buying island now, um, last year, we had, uh, you know, that hurricane that was over the Bahamas for a couple of days and, you know, we got really, really lucky and we didn't get much of a wind situation, but the island was, was evacuated. So make sure that you know your routes. Um, also, again, there's a lot of people coming from up north that are a little older in age. Um, they might need a little more medication um, so make sure that, you know, you go and get an extra refill. Even if there is no hurricane coming, just get an extra refill. You know, your doctor will know about that, especially if you're in Florida. They, they will make sure that they'll give you the extra refill for your medication. So keep that handy. Um, you know, I have a little one, so I always uh, keep uh, extra, you know, clothes in um, handy for him, you know, in my car, wherever I go. But you know, during hurricane, just pack a bag with extra clothes for the kids. Never know what's gonna happen. So just put them in there and you know, you're set for them. And um, what else? I mean, um, you know, the hurricanes in comparison to other storms that are going up north or tornadoes or stuff like that, is something that we can plan for. 
So let's not get caught last minute on stuff that, oh, we could have done a week before. So, you know, if you're not ready yet, you can get ready today and forget about it. When the hurricane comes, you're ready to go. So that's my tip. And this is me, Antonella Zervopoulos with Atlantic Shorts Realty. Thank awesome. you. Thank you, Antonella. Great, great tips. You guys are throwing out the knowledge out there for everyone, loving it. <laughs> And you mentioned something about the surge protection and such, and I just want um, to make sure that when people are thinking about that, if you are keeping things plugged in for any reason, make sure you have surge protectors on your electronics. Just wanted to add that in there. Uh, right, so now we're gonna go to the lending side of things, which should be interesting because if, they're, if you're in the middle of a transaction with a lender and a hurricane's on the way, I'm sure they have some great tips. So Tony, you are up first. I guess not so much tips. It's always the lending side that like we get the stuff that is much more boring and not as much fun. So I know it's a hurricane, so none of it's really fun preparing for it, but you make fun of everything. It, it's a lot more enjoyable. So when it comes to uh, just to add a couple things I didn't hear, everybody's done a fantastic job of uh, tips and everything else for it. The one other thing, I don't know if I did hear it, um, IDs, passports, making sure that stuff you have on hand too, you know, and I know there's a little, little secret of putting it in a Ziploc bag and even putting it in your uh, dishwasher um, so it stays safe in there as well. So, and, and I shouldn't say this maybe again, but I always got to go back that, you know, that uh, washing machine can also be used to hold ice in, in, in beverages. So, uh, you know, ne never too bad to have a cold beer in that washing machine when you need it as well, when you, when you don't have anything cold. So outside of that, though, there are some key things. Obviously, if you're looking to purchase down here in Florida um, during hurricane season, or if you're even looking to refinance during hurricane season, two of the biggest things, um, again, just like Katie did, Peter, I'm going to put this a little more off on you. But one of the biggest things is being able to bind your policy. So if there's a storm coming through uh, and it's known, a lot of the insurance providers, they, they're going to kind of put it on hold, you know, so depending on how soon the storm's coming through, a lot of times they do want to wait and see how it shakes out. Obviously, you don't want to get a policy put in place as a company where, you know, it could come through and cause some severe damage and you just put something in place. So depending on the timing of everything else, sometimes it can delay some things with that. So it's just something to keep in mind. It happens. Um, you know, you got to make sure everything's going. Quite frankly, sometimes it's not the best to just rush binding a policy before it comes, because if you do purchase that home right before, you don't know what can happen. Same with a refi. The other item when it comes to the lending side is appraisals. Um, so obviously the home, if an appraisal is already completed before the storm hits, then a storm comes through before you close. One thing you're always going to run into is if FEMA comes out and says it was a natural disaster, something happened, it's going to cause delays. So be prepared again. It's just something to keep in mind during this time of year. It's, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is and you have to be ready for it. So um, on appraisals, what will happen if it does get considered kind of we had an event with FEMA and it's a natural disaster, we're going to have to have re-inspections. So you're not going to want to purchase a home that has a bunch of damage done to it as well. So you might think of it as a hindrance at that point. However, it's more of a protection, not just for the bank, but for yourself as well. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, other than that, like everybody said, don't, don't panic. Panic makes it worse. Um, you know, if you are not wanting to be here and you choose not to, you know, go through it, don't wait to the last minute either is another thing I would get. You know, if you're gonna make plans and make decisions to kind of let's get moving, Go ahead and do it. There's nothing wrong with that if you feel more comfortable doing so. Just the panic, the rushing, um, and getting yourself up in works creates more for everybody. And then you get to the gas stations and people are, you know, just stay calm, be prepared. The best thing you can do is just simply be ready ahead of time. And also, once it's over, obviously we know everybody, Home Depot, everything else, they pack generators in um, to, to get ready for all this and everything else. Also, some of this stuff goes on sale when hurricane season ends. So prepare at the end of the hurricane season for the next hurricane season and save yourself some money to buy a house. That's all I got for now. I like that, Tony. What good little nuggets of information. <laughs> Always looking out for the sale. <laughs> all right, now we've got Carol also on the mortgage side. Let's go to spotlight your video. You're muted, yeah. 
Unmuted. Sorry about that. Carol Hulls here with Gateway Mortgage. I'm just going to follow up on, on what Tony said, because in the lending business, there's only a couple things that are going to be affected um, if there's a hurricane coming while you're in process. And, you know, I've been doing this a long time in Florida here. I've lived here 18 years. So you kind of get the groove on when you when it is hurricane season. And what I tell my clients is when we and Peter can follow up on this as well. When we get within 30 days of closing, no matter what time of the year it is, I have my customers bind that policy just in case um, for their insurance so that we can close on time. Um, and then the rates are going up. They've gone up significantly in the area based because of the storms. And then I'm hearing other issues with claims um, here in Florida. So you want to make sure you're especially upfront with the realtors and your lenders that you're being realistic on what these premiums are co um, costing because it could affect their ability to even qualify for the home as you get closer to closing. And then to follow up um, on the appraisal, um, if the property's already been appraised, we have to do a final inspection if a storm has come through and it's been deemed a um, disaster area. And there's actually several different things that can happen. If it has been declared a disaster area by FEMA, then and it's an FHA loan that an FHA rostered appraiser has to go out. They're pretty specific about that. Um, we'll let a regular inspector go out that did the initial appraisal or the initial inspector if it's another type of loan. So you gotta, you gotta know what, what the disaster was or if it was just a storm that came through and we weren't a disaster area, we can do a lender cert where we go out and make sure the house is still standing. And that's something that the branch manager or you know I can do that, probably Tony can do it. And we take pictures, you know, walk around the perimeter of the house. I've had to do it several times because we've had hurricanes over the years. And I just also want to make sure with my customers as well, I might see something and not see something that they've seen because I'm not going inside the house to do a lender cert, but you know, they have to sign that they're okay. House looks good. Roof's still there. Everything's still there. So those are the kind of things that we look for in lending, you know, just it's common sense. That's it. Very nice. Thanks, Carol. And um, I don't know if either, since we're talking about the lending side really quick, I don't know if you guys have anything to mention about um, like after a storm, if there is a huge storm, don't a lot of people end up, I know forbearance is kind of like a big thing. So like- well, That's what I was talking about after the storm. Mm -hmm. Storm has caught like that storm that we just had. I ha I'm doing a loan in North Carolina and North Carolina, the whole state, they included the whole state. So if it's a disaster, it's still ongoing. They haven't determined the damage yet. So yeah. I'm kind of in a holding pattern, you know, waiting to find out, okay, what's FEMA gonna do? So once the storm hits, we're, we're relying on FEMA to tell us or the governor to tell us or the president to tell us exactly how they're rating this area. And it, it doesn't happen right away. Sometimes it does if it's really disaster, like really disastrous, but what's going on in North Carolina, they have not determined an end date they're still looking at all the damage. But once it's been dictated that it, there is, it could be, you know, we had one a couple couple years back where it was Fort Pierce that got it, but we didn't get it here. So we, anything that we were doing in Fort, Fort Pierce had to be re-inspected, whereas St. Lucie County didn't. So it's gonna be where your property is located and what was justified in that particular area. Does that make sense? Is that where you were yeah. asking? Yeah, that makes sense. That's good. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. Those are some great tips on the, or knowledge on the mortgage side of things. So back to the realtor side, we have Alana and I'm going to highlight your video now. Thanks, Lucy. Hi, everybody. My name is Alana. I'm with EXP Realty on the Dean's List Group. Uh, and, so, and I love this topic. I love making sure that people know exactly what's going on. And uh, Katie, you touched on a fantastic point. We are uh, ultimately a really tightly knit community and we are known for making friends with our neighbors and you know our, our part-time residents so that we can make sure that everybody gets what they need. Somebody else mentioned uh, you know making sure that their senior citizen neighbors uh, have enough medication and have you know the manpower to be able to protect themselves and all of those things are really near and dear to us local natives. Uh, we take a lot of pride in that. Um, by the way, Tony, shame on you for sharing our, our beer hack for chilling. <laughs> I can't believe you did that, but you know, everybody else, I guess, had to find out sometime. 
um, and touching on touching on the saving of the water and using that for your toilet in the event of uh, you know everything going out. Um, my family always actually would go to Ace Hardware and get the little two dollar uh, pluggy plugs that would seal right over top of a drain plug. And so we would actually, when a storm would start, it would be like a family gig. We would like make a point to dedicate one of our bathtubs to that and actually fill it up with water so that we could just do like a scoop right in. It's right there next to the toilet, super convenient. Um, one thing I'd like to add to the list of you know great ideas that uh, these agents and lenders have put out is the getting of a vendor list together. Um, you know, my mom taught me to drive defensively and operate with storms, uh, you know, with preparedness instead of panic, which is panic's a killer <laughs> in so many different ways. Um, and so uh, it's, it's a great idea to go about when you first purchased a home, make sure the very first thing that you're doing in a preparedness mindset is getting together a list of, um, you know, electricians, a list of vendors who can help in, in the event of uh, storm damage, you want restoration people on lock, you can definitely get your professional that you worked with to give you a list of local professionals that they would recommend, uh, you know, because getting a recommendation is way better than just Google doctoring it. Um, and by the way, if you don't already know who Christy Romano is, look her up. I think it's Apex Electronics. Uh, she puts together fantastic uh, you know, kits for generators for various things. So falling into that preparedness again, um, you know, any, any good professional who's been through a few storm seasons, they have people that they trust and rely on to help you get your home situated before storm season ever comes up. So that would be, that would be my little tip and my contribution to this conversation. Awesome. Thanks, Alana. That's a great tip. And Christy Romano with Apex Electric is amazing. She really is. <laughs> She truly is. They're local as well. And again, having that local list, very, very important. Um, next up is Peter. I'm going to spotlight your video. Please. Hello, everyone. Peter Negron, the Hunt Group, powered by Keller Williams. And I know we talked a lot about the things to do as far as checking your panels and things like that. A little bit more you're coming in and topic. out, Peter. So, first of all, when you are checking your panels, can you get me now? Yeah, we can hear you now. You're coming in and out a little bit, but there you go. All right, perfect. So, first, we're going to check the hardware on the on the type of panels that you have. So, when I say hardware, I mean just like this. There's usually a couple of different pieces of hardware that you have when it comes with the panels. Some come with wing nuts. Some come with just the screws. So make sure you check that way beforehand. Make sure that they're totally functional. That they tighten all, all the way down and they come all the way out. Do replace these things for a living, like Bob that we had on earlier uh, with that hardware. I would reach out to someone like Bob, get them out there as soon as possible so that they can replace that where the storms come on in. Now there are st some other things that you could do to your exterior to help you during the storm, especially if you have an older roof and you're getting ready to sell, you definitely don't want something like that, uh, like roof issues to come in between you and selling your home. So they do have reinforcing roof straps that you could also put on your home. Now, <clears throat> when we talk about looking and making sure debris is not in your area or making sure that you don't have any debris that could go through your windows, not only debris that can go through your windows, but make sure you're checking your swales and make sure you're checking for low hanging branches that could hit your uh, windows and doors damaging your, or damage your roof. Now, if you have issues with wires that are too close to trees, you can also call the city and they can come out and make sure to take down those trees uh, away, way back away from the wires. And they can also get somebody to clean out those gutter systems and swales near your home so that not only your house is protected, but also your community's homes are protected. And that's all I have for you guys today. Hope you have a good week. Thank you, Peter. Great, great tips. I'm looking even at a house to show us on. <laughs> How fancy. <laughs> All righty, so um, that was a little discussion we had between our realtors and lenders on the call today. We are going to go into our second guest speaker now, Peter Sicoli with Sailfish Insurance. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing some, some insurance knowledge with us. We sure know that it's a very, very important part of the whole process, so thank you. 
Absolutely. Thanks for having me, everybody. As Lucy said, Peter Cipolli with Selfish Insurance Group. And I just have to say, I think my training sessions have paid off with the Bourgeois Real Estate Group because uh, they basically said everything that I was going to say anyway. So way to pay attention, guys. I appreciate it. Um, hurricane season, we all know it starts June 1st, usually lasts five months with uh, our peaks, peak months usually being August and September best piece of information that I can give you is don't wait until hurricane season to start looking at your policy. Um, make sure you you know what your policy actually covers. If you have flood insurance, um, I was probably a year, maybe a year and a half into insurance when Hurricane Irma came. And I actually had a carrier that had a three-day waiting period um, for, for uh, flood insurance. And at Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday prior to the hurricane, I was at the office till about three o'clock in the morning every night trying to get everybody flood insurance. And I wrote over 53 flood insurance policies um, just in those three days, which is crazy. Um, please don't wait until the last minute. Um, flood insurance is very cheap and it's not a matter of, if you're gonna flood, it's a matter of when. Um, Hope Sound Heights is a perfect example of that. Just recently, we had a, a bad rainstorm come through, and I think there was 12 houses that got flooded, and they completely lost everything in their house. Uh, you know, I was part of the the team that went in there to help rip everything out to help help them repair. And what would have cost them $500 a year for flood insurance. They now have nothing and had to have the community come in and help them. And FEMA wouldn't even help them because it wasn't an emergency situation. Um, so flood insurance is very cheap, uh, less than a cup of coffee a day. And it could you know, protect your, your most valuable asset being your home. A um, couple of notes that I took down. Um, uh, Bob Thornton from O'Donnell, uh, great information. And he mentioned having shutter protection. And Katie, you mentioned um, the hurricane um, wind mitigation and getting those credits. So one thing you have to remember is it's an all or nothing credit. So if you have 10 openings, this includes your, your doors, garage doors, windows, skylights. If you have 10 openings, nine of them are covered and one is not, you get zero credit. Um, so <laughs> uh, Carol, I see a point. In, um, so it's it's in, important to know that you know you make sure you have everything covered before you pay for that extra wind mitigation just to find out that you're not going to have that credit. Um, and let's see, also with shutter protection. So if you're receiving that credit on your homeowner's policy, you have an obligation to put those shutters up before a storm. So if you do not put them up and you have damage to your house, you're you'll still get your claim paid. However, next year on your renewal, you'll lose your credit for the hurricane shutters because you failed to put them up. Um, so it's it's very important that you put them up. And, uh, you know, we offer a service um, through Sailfish that if you're elderly, disabled, or a veteran, and you need help putting your shutters up, give us a call, we'll come out and do it for you. Um, you just sit in your house and relax or, or watch us and give us a water or a beer and we'll make sure that we help you get your, your shutters up. Um, let's see. Um, going over your policy, again, knowing what is in your policy is key. And if you're not sure or you have questions, give us a call. We'll go over your policy, even if it's not with us. You know, we're here to help educate the community. And, um, you know, we do that by walking down the line with your, with your policy. Um, so in, prepar in preparation for the uh, hurricane, get a copy of your policy, print it off, put it in a Ziploc bag, and keep it with all those other documents, your driver's license, your passports, et cetera. Um, so it's, it's always good because if you can't get in your email, you save it in your email, your phone, and you don't have a charge, you don't know what's covered, you don't know who to call. Um, Carol, you mentioned uh, binding of a policy when there's a hurricane out there. Uh, very important. Uh, if you're looking to close and, you know, we have a storm out there, typically the companies will start shutting down when the storm reaches the 500-mile cone. 
once we're in that cone, they will start shutting down. And because of Irma, they've actually started shutting down as soon as a storm's named and it's anywhere in our vicinity. So uh, like this last storm, it wasn't set to come until Friday or Saturday. I had companies shut down the Friday before. So they're starting to shut down more, uh, limit, it limits our binding and the ability of, for us to put coverage in place. So if you do uh, get ready to close after a hurricane, you, you hit the nail on the head when you talk about uh, a post-storm inspection. Uh, and insurance companies will require that as well. They wanna make sure that there is no damage because that's gonna be considered pre-existing damage. And if your policy is in place after a hurricane, you know, you could potentially uh, get your claim denied because of that. Um, and other than the other not so uncommon things to do, uh, you know, keep your non-perishable emergency supplies on hands. I mean, this has all uh, been beat like a dead horse in, the, in this one. Um, have an evacuation route and, and plan it ahead of time. Um, taking inventory of your personal property, uh, personal property coverage as well uh, is on your policy. And what I typically do before a storm is I will video my house and everything that's in there. And anything with a, um, like take your TVs, for example, get a picture uh, or a video of the brand and, and the serial number, and then email it to yourself, upload it to the cloud, put it in five different places. So this way you know what exactly was there and it makes the claim process a whole lot easier. Um, and that's about it. If anybody has any questions, happy to, uh, happy to answer them. Awesome, Peter, that was great information. Does anybody have any questions for Peter? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, no, maybe so. What's your favorite hurricane snack? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jeez, that's pretty uh, personal, Katie. <laughs> um, is, is, I mean, what is it my favorite hurricane snack? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, that was a, that was a, that was a really hard question, Katie. I'm glad you were able to answer it, Peter. Thank you so much for <laughs> your service and your time. <laughs> I, quit. I do have a question. I mean, I when I'm hearing Peter Sicoli talk about you know, the uh, taking a video and, and taking pictures of serial numbers, not only does that apply to your personal belongings yeah. at your house, but that also applies if you're a small business owner to do that in your, your office as well, regardless of how much you think you are protected in the building or, you know, area that you're in, as far as the landlord taking care of things, the interior is your responsibility. Renters Absolutely. too. Renters. Absolutely. Great point. Great point. Very smart for and renters, renters as well when they're going through a hurricane too, Peter. Um, so great, great information as always. You guys are amazing. Truly, truly. Thank you so much, Peter, for um, all of those tidbits of information. I do, we're going to go into the section where everybody gives their top tip and Peter, you're welcome to give a top tip if you have another one or want to reiterate on something important. Um, and my top tip was already kind of taken. So this is Thursday's top tips in real estate, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna say my mine was don't watch the news <laughs> because it's truly they always overhype it. And we go through big storms, and that that storm that you mentioned, Peter, in Hope Hills, um, that wasn't a hurricane. That was a regular storm. That was just a regular rainstorm. Yep. We yep. go through these crazy storms all the time. So it, we, you know, we are going to survive, you know, a tropical storm, you know, the first, which is what we were kind of threatened with earlier. A couple of weeks ago, um, you know, it's it's going to be okay. Just be prepared and don't be greedy. Don't be greedy when you go to the storm or to the to the store. I said storm. <laughs> when you go to the store, don't be greedy. Get what you need and be you know try to be prepared ahead of time. But that's you know the biggest tip that I can give. And also, if you have pets. Um, having a kitty pool or pee pads for your pets um, so that they can go to the bathroom. If you do happen to be stuck inside and it's raining, it's good to have like a kitty pool and you can get like sods. Sometimes we have a great community here. I know that there's sod um, over at like Palm City Sod. They were giving away free sod during a hurricane a couple of years ago and you could bring up a, a couple of those pieces of sod, put them in a kitty pool and have it for your pets to be able to go to in the garage um, if you have a garage or whatever it might be. So yeah, 
just a, just my that's my top tip of the week. But um, we'll go to Cody. What is your top tip of the week? Thank you. A second to unmute. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so other than everyone should watch this series every week, my top tip would be to be prepared and know what you're dealing with. I just want to um, like give a little story here. So it's not a story. It actually happened. Um, one of the first, I think it was the second or third hurricane I went through. This was right at not shortly after I built this house. Um, in this very room, um, with the shutters up, it blew the glass in. Kind of scary because I was still kind of green to the whole hurricane thing back then. But um, so I had to tape a garbage bag over the window. And then when it was all said and done, you know, I, I, I was under the impression that things were still under warranty or whatever. And I'm calling the shutter people. They're blaming the window people. The window people are blaming the builder. The builder's blaming the shutter people. In the end, it came out of my pocket. So my tip would be to make sure that you use local, dependable, licensed, insured um, businesses that, that that or vendors that deal with anything with your house. Make sure you know what you have. Make sure that they will be held accountable. Um, so just you know, be sure that you are um, abreast of what you need to have done. So that would be <laughs> oh, don't impact windows and start protection. <laughs> Cody, that was one of those. He did it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so I don't know why I'm probably be talking to you too. soon because I'm tired of the shutters. <laughs> yeah, no, and having those impact windows, it's very nice because you know you're gonna. It's not gonna blow in, so it's it's a very um, nice cushion. Uh, Katie, what about you? Hey, Lucy, I really like your top tip about not being greedy. And I think that, you know, going back to kind of, I was kind of being sarcastic as I am quite frequently, uh, but I think that it's very important to remind people that you don't need to go to the store to pick up five gallon jugs of water or wasteful single use plastic bottles of water. The water comes out of your tap for the weeks leading up to the storm, for the days leading up to the storm. And most of us are on uh, the municipal utility service where the water is going to continue to go. We would have to have a major, major, major issue and problem for us never to have water. And if that's the case, we're gone. The, the world is flat. That's a five. You know, that's catastrophic. So the water is going to continue to flow. If you live outside of the urban services boundary, you probably do want to get a generator so that you have some water. But Again, leading up to, you can use your filtered water, put it in, you know, uh, reusable uh, glass or plastic and freeze it or, you know, store it, chill it. Water comes out of the tap, you know, don't panic. It, it's simple, simple things, simple things, simple things. Common sense is so uncommon, it's now a superpower. <laughs> now, and you, um... That is a very good tip that you brought. Oh, Jart, it just like flew out of my brain. I can't think today. Um, I, you just, you had mentioned something that I really wanted to um, to highlight and it wasn't the water, it was- Freezing um, it. You can freeze it. You have ice and drinking water. And you no, can keep some it. People, some people think that tap water is like there's something wrong with it. Tap water is great. I don't know what the problem is. But you but, can buy a filter you know, leading up to it. You can get it, you can put an RO uh, system in your sink. You can get the water out of your refrigerator that's filtering it, buy a new filter. Keep that oh no, on. I remember. I remember what it was that I wanted to say. The, um, in regards to our storms, like I said, the flooding that happened in Hope Hills was just from a rainstorm. We get crazy storms all the time. In order for our power or our water to go out, we're gonna need to be at like at least a three or four, like, you know, it's, if, if we're getting tropical storms and, you know, category ones like we're gonna it's fine it's fine we're gonna most likely still have power if, if, for, if for some reason there's some crazy branch or something that hits you or whatever but it's very it does take a strong storm to take out our power and our water i wanted and to, bring to that point fpnl and our on, and our individual publicly owned utility services have invested so much money back into our grid into our water supply that, I mean, really we would have to, you'd have to be pretty far out um, from, the, from the main line 
to lose power, but those guys are out there in the bucket trucks. As soon as they're allowed to, the guys are out there, FPNL, they are like heroes around here. They are celebrities. Um, you know, we, we always take good care of them when there's, when we see them and they need a water or a beer or whatever, a snack, you know, we take care of our guys cause they're putting the, the, you know, electricity back on, but they're, they're on it. They, there's a, they're, they've got a system to get things back up and running very quickly. Um, so, you know, if we do have three or four days of without power, you might want to stay with a friend or, you know, maybe go out of town for a couple of days. Um, but yeah. That's what I tell Very them. Good. It's like they, they always worry about tearing my grass up. I'm like, tear it up, man. Just <laughs> make sure I have powers on. Tear it up. Do what you got to do. <laughs> uh, all right. Awesome. Tony, what's your top tip of the week? Well, um, just to go back a little bit with the with the hurricane team, if everything fails, then take a trip and go away. Um, you know, with the good insurance coverage, uh, like Peter can offer you guys um and uh, you know flood coverage and all of that all of your uh, belongings can be replaced but not your lives just like they say in the news so i mean i don't want to put it on you know i don't put a, i don't want to put a cloud on it but if we do get to the point where we need to leave then leave your house can be replaced your life cannot be replaced so Take a trip up north, take the kids to Disney, take the kids, you know, somewhere fun in Tennessee or I don't know, whatever you have family up north, uh, far away from the hurricane, just go there. And when you come back, you know, we'll probably be still here. But, you know, if you're really scared and again, you know, if you have neighbors and you're new to the area, just talk to your neighbors, Let, uh, you know, be friendly with them and ask them what they did during the past season, what, you know, what precautions they took to get ready for the hurricane and, you know, follow their leads. So that's my tip. Absolutely. Thanks. And Thank uh, what about you, Tony Garcia? So my, my tip of the day is want to put this in the best, best way I possibly can is don't get, don't get greedy. Um, I just did a video today. A lot of you have saw and shared. Thank you very much. And like, um, due to the fact of what FHFA has done with, interest rates and pricing when it comes to conventional loans and any refinances. So a lot of rates are rates are fantastic. We all know that they've been good. However, this is a totally unexpected shift. The thing of uncertainty right now, I have a lot of clients that are kind of on the fence, everything else over a couple hundred bucks here or there in an interest rate or an eighth of a point here or there. Biggest thing is obviously you need to save money. It's the reason to refinance or you're pulling capital out to pay off some debts and everything else. So it has to make sense for you, but sometimes greed gets in the way. Um, I have a few clients that, you know, have like, you know what, I'm going to test the market a little more. And I'm like, you know, listen, if you're comfortable with it right now, you're saving a couple hundred bucks a month. This can also go the other way right now. Times of uncertainty. If you're there and it's comfortable for you, don't, don't play the Russian roulette game too long because Unfortunately, my, my day today and when I get off here is going to be a lot more conversations of, hey, we can't control it. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac that we underwrite these loans to, they, they gave us no warning about it at all. It was simply just a bulletin they put out yesterday that everybody's been utterly shocked by um, that, it, you know, it's not going to change the game, but it does. It, it could change everything by fifteen to three thousand, fifteen hundred to three thousand dollars in like fees or a quarter to an eighth of a point interest rate difference, which is going to affect things. And sometimes kind of getting too greedy, thinking it can only get better doesn't always happen. So, you know, if you're able to save some money and do things, don't always wait forever because uh, that, that can change tomorrow. So true. So true. Great, great tip, Tony. Thank you. Um, and to, to your point about the, I mean, the secret that you gave out that Alana mentioned about the um, washing machine, it also holds liquor. I'm just saying that's on my, that's on, that's on my list. I mean, you guys might be a little bit more modest, but I'm just saying liquor stores get busy during hurricane season too. And it's funny. You can, you can tell who's a Floridian and, and who's, who's from up North or from another state. Cause they're the ones freaking out at Home Depot and we're the ones at the liquor store. <laughs> I, I still say I'm with the liquor as well, but you know, if you're stuck inside that long, sometimes the beer, you know, I can have a few more beers. If I, if I bust the liquor out too early, you never know what can happen. It's after you lose power, you, you can got bust it. out the liquor. <laughs> you got to be prepared. Be prepared. There are two Absolutely. sides. 
<laughs> and I always like, invite oh. my buddies over. Johnny, Jack, Jim, Jose. They're always there. <laughs> the no, you got at least a week of that, too. <laughs> cold, the liquor can stay warm, and you can add ice. So you got perishable and non-perishable. Yeah, there you go. See, you got to be skillful with those snacks that include alcohol. <laughs> and Peter, do you have a top tip that you want to give or like a one thing you want to reiterate? Absolutely. Um, top tip and reiteration is don't wait until the last minute to go over your insurance coverage. Um, again, don't get, don't get stuck with your pants down. You know, call me today. We'd be happy to help go over your coverages, even if I'm not your agent. I'll be happy to educate you on, on your insurance policy. Thank you. You're so awesome, Peter. And thank you so much for coming on here. You guys can actually reach out to any of the professionals um, and our uh, special guests. Their information is in the description of this video. So make sure you guys check them out. Um, they are awesome. And I'm very thankful for them to come on and actually share this information with you guys. Again, we do this every Thursday at 2 p.m. Thursday's top tips in real estate. You can watch the replay on our YouTube channel, Aero Title Services. So make sure to check out our other weeks and the other topics we've gone over and make sure to stay tuned for next week's topic. So thank you guys for being live and thank you all for giving your amazing information. Until next week, we will see you then. Bye. Thank you, Lucy. Thank Thanks, you, Lucy. Selfish insurance. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Bye.